Noam Chomsky's Occupy. We won it all. So, I'm reading passages out of this. Um, so, there's a lot of things that's been going on. You've got uh, folks uh, sabotaging the auctions, uh, uh, foreclosed houses, protesting and protecting the families who are getting uh, evicted on fairly since families need to have a home to live here in America. We got 22 empty houses for every homeless person. 22 empty houses for every homeless person. We're the land of plenty. Why we got homeless people? Why we got poverty? Why we got poor people? We're the, we're the land, we're the richest country in the world. And we can't even take care of our most vulnerable. We can't even feed our own. We can't even house our own. Clothe our own. We can offer education, but no health care. So we don't. We can't even guarantee life in this country. 22 empty houses per homeless person. And I read a statistic, and while I don't know if it's 75%, the statistic was 75% of homeless people are veterans of the United States. So they fought for this country. They fought for America, and they still have no place to live. That ain't right. And uh, poverty and homelessness is the clearest perspective of where the system is broken. Capitalism cannot solve poverty. Capitalism cannot solve pollution. Capitalism cannot solve uh, uh, recessions and depressions. So just people making as much money as they can, trying to manipulate and win over everybody else. Uh, it turns out that it's not a perfect society. You need government, and, and Milton Friedman, even Milton Friedman said, pointed out you needed uh, the courts, so that way businesses would have uh, an impartial spot to uh, air out their grievances and work out their conflicts whenever they have an impasse. So even Mil Milton Friedman, one of the um, titans of the intellectual right, he agrees with some government, so, so blaming everything on government yeah, it's true, but the only reason government is bad is because it's influenced by the corporations. If the people controlled the government, then the corporations wouldn't have free reign over everything. So the corporations, when they own government, and the government is subordinate to the corporations, that's when you have fascism. That's fascism according to Mussolini, according to FDR. Corporatism is fascism. When the corporations run the government, that's fascism. FDR says when the government needs to be powerful enough to tell the corporations to stop whenever they're inflicting uh, harm uh, upon the people. Teddy Roosevelt was a huge trust buster, right? That he was known to bust in trust. So the people want a people's champ who will stand up to the big insurance companies and uh, military industrial complex and uh, you know any behemoth organization on behalf of the common man, the working class people. Or the middle class people, 90% of all of us working for somebody else. So 95% uh, of us at least are working paycheck to paycheck. We all work in people. So online technology, you got Inner Occupy. So interoccupy.org is connecting Occupy forces around the country and it's helping to facilitate regional gathering strategies and actions. What makes this all the remarkable is that despite the inevitable repression, as Chomsky calls it, the pushback of police brutality, mass arrest, trumped up charges, restrictive city ordinances, surveillance, infiltration, and raids. The movement continues to grow, occupying new fronts from inner city neighborhoods and local courtrooms to the halls of Congress. Simply continuing in the face of repression can be considered an achievement. With a presence in hundreds of cities, mounting numbers of arrests, and big plans for more actions up to the presidential elections and beyond. The movement is also very much occupying the court system and challenging the political nature of government repression. The movement's tenacity and growth demonstrate the degree to which huge numbers of people no longer believe the system listens or responds to ordinary people. The economic recession is linked to a recession of democracy. The latter is a recession so profound that many politicians no longer hide the fact that they do not listen. During a Republican presidential debate moderated by CNN anchor Anderson Cooper, for example, one of the candidates was asked an immigration-related question. When he ignored the question, rambled on about something else, Anderson Cooper pushed him to answer, dismissing Cooper. The politician snarled, you get to ask the questions, and I get to answer like I want to, drawing loud boos from the live audience. 
Well, this was a, a new Rick Perry shows up to the GE, GOP debate, so I think it's probably Rick Perry. But booing politicians isn't enough. Politicians open abandonment of the public interest. Accountability, accountability and commitment to real democracy is precisely what has driven people from all walks of life to camp out in wind, snow, and rain and face tear gas, pepper spray, stun grenades, handcuffs, and jail time. People are waking up and coming out. They're blocking bridges and shutting down ports. They're marching in the streets, forming affinity groups, creating their own media, finally speaking up, and finally being heard. Protests and civil disobedience are now just the ever-changing surface of something deeper and more powerful. An evolving public insurgency with openness, democracy, and nonviolent direct action as its primary weapons. Direct action. That's uh, some MLK shit. Nonviolent direct action. Nonviolent is, isn't a weak tool. Nonviolent is saying, I'm going to stand right here in your face and uh, tell you what you're doing is wrong. And if I can uh, inspire you to attack me and I catch that on camera, then the, the uh, public will... Uh, sympathize with my plight and we will get changes. <laughs> so, trumped up charges, mass arrest, police brutality, restrictive city ordinances, like saying that you're not allowed to camp out for like two weeks or so, uh, or at UofL, you're in the student body, the dean will not allow you to camp overnight, they will take your tent physical plant and the police will team up against the individual student if you try to put a tent out so even though you, I pay fifty thousand dollars for my education um, the real education that I got is that I'm not allowed to put a tent out on the lawn uh, I'm a danger even though he come in my tent and he checked everything out and he saw that I had you know nothing nothing uh, was suspicious I let him check anything I had any bags I had nothing going on there is just me was wanting to read books in a tent at U of L, and that wasn't allowed. So booing is not enough. Politicians are openly abandoning the public interest. They're not accountable. They don't have no commitment to real democracy. That's why so many people are are being are facing these forces. People are waking up. They're coming out. They're blocking bridges. They're shutting down ports. They're marching in the streets, forming affinity groups, creating their own media. Uh, finally speaking up, finally being heard. Protests and civil disobedience are now just the ever-changing surface of something deeper and more powerful. An evolving public insurgency with openness, democracy, and nonviolent direct action as its primary weapons. That's what's been happening since September 2011, uh, and that's what is happening now. No rush to produce leaders or to issue a closed set of demands. Occupy and embodies a vision of democracy that is fundamentally antagonistic to the management of society as a corporate controlled space that funds a political system to serve the wealthy, ignore the poor, and answer everyone else the same way the politician answered Anderson Cooper, however the hell it wants. Instead of letting the market solve things the way it solved things for the elderly couple in Maine, people are demanding new sorts of solutions and demanding of themselves the diligence and creativity to invent them. The emerging shift in consciousness is profound, but it's only a step towards fuller further transformation. People are waking up to the fact that we won't get the ne necessary change from someone else, from somewhere else, from corporate finance politicians, or simply by voting. The Obama presidency may have been better than that of Bush, but it has not delivered what millions of voting Americans, myself included, wanted and continue to want, a liberating change we can believe in. Perhaps the movement's most radical message is its incitement to change ourselves, individually, in the workplace, and socially. Chomsky touches on this when he discusses the importance of redefining ideas like growth. If we continue to pursue the dominant model, he says, we'll be like lemmings walking over a cliff. Instead, he encourages the movement to continue spreading ideas about a different way of living. That is based not on maximizing how much we can buy, but on maximizing values that are important for life. Expecting elected officials to turn things around on their own is to go the way of the lemming. No one is going to do it for us. As the black feminist poet June Jordan said, we're the ones that we have been waiting for. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Occupy advocates democracy as the best way to work things out, which is important. And Occupy Louisville needs to understand what consensus actually means. I voted discussion. They want to cut out discussion, and I twinkled down. I twinkled my fingers down, right? I played their, their stupid stack parliamentary procedure games. But it has nothing to do with stack. It has nothing to do with uh, honoring the process or... Uh, uh, standing up for the principles of which the meetings were supposed to be held, democratic principles. There's no consensus there. I twinkled down. They didn't ask. 
why I twinkled down. They didn't want me to say anything at all. I remember saying one thing, and I was kind of, um, uh, I don't want to say I was laughed out, but I mean, I, it did not feel comfortable. They also want to complain about no safe space for women. There's no safe space for me. In fact, uh, one of the guys there uh, had got beat up by other Occupy people. A, uh, and I think it's probably race related, race and gender related. So we got to learn to get along. If we can't even get along, uh, that's what they'll say. The fascists always say, well, we can restore order. And since we can restore the order, then that means we're the ones that should be in charge. Well, I think we can have a democratic, uh, consensual, non hierarchical, and participatory self governance. And that literally lays the framework for a new world by building it here and now. And, and to show that it works. So that's the words of New York Occupy. They're showing that through consensual, non-hierarchical and participatory self-governance, governance, we are literally, literally laying the framework for a new world by building it here and now, and it works. I wrote up a club, uh, U of L, and got it passed. We are changed. I wasn't able to do much with it, but I made sure that consensus, since consensus is one of the core Foundings. That's why you do the stack. That's why you have all these hand signals, uh, signals, and why you have a microphone, so that everybody can participate, especially if they got something to say. And that's the only way if you can actually put your voice to the pe people. That's Paul Freire. He says if you, uh, to be a true revolutionary humanist educator, you always have to put your opinions and your ideas to the test of the people. So you always have to have some group or some crowd of folks that you're talking to and say here's my ideas and you got to get their feedback that's the only way that will actually uh, proceed so we we must allow dissent even amongst ourselves if we're for democracy so these are frustrations I had with the early parts of Occupy so we're, we're, we're doing something different now but I did have um, it wasn't safe for me. I mean, I stayed there one night. It was cold, so it's not safe for anybody. Um, but there, there was some, there were some crazy people that was staying there, and uh, it made me nervous. They, they would yell and shout in the middle of the night and carry on, you know. And I, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about, what they're doing. Part of me thought they was just flipping out just to try to, uh, uh, try to scare me or somebody else, you know, in the tent, just to try to. Say, hey, look, I'm crazy, and, uh, you know, don't fuck with me, or I'm a fuck, you know, go, go, go ballistic. Because, like, with the perceived crazy person, nobody wants to fuck with the perceived crazy person, right? Oh, they're crazy. I ain't going to deal with them. No way. So, challenging corporate manipulation of the economy. So, be more inclusive. Let's be for consensus. Occupy Louisville. Let's be for consensus and democracy. Let's include all folks, Okay. All people. Stop the racism. Stop the sexism. Stop the homophobia. Start loving another. Let's work towards a multicultural society. We're a nation of immigrants, so we all are different. We should celebrate our differences. And in fact, the norm is that we all are different. That's the norm. So if you're trying to be just like everybody else, then you don't understand life. You comes from inside yourself. That's who you are, what comes out of you. So challenging corporate manipulation of the economy reveals connected forms of cultural domination and social control, and the process leads to deeper questioning. How can we find ways to work together to overcome barriers and tensions and become part of a dedicated, ongoing, sustained movement, which is going to last a long time, asks Chomsky. How can we be together in a unity that is complex and emancipatory, asks Angela Davis. How can we get it together? In the spirit of asking and exploring answers to those questions in general assemblies, in protest and civil disobedience, in print, over the airwaves, in the streets, across borders, in many languages, in jail and courts, and in the freedom of occupied spaces, the open magazine pamphlet series, founded in 1991 to give voice to the democracy movements, is partnering with Brooklyn-based immigrant advocacy group Add the Letante Alliance to launch Zuccotti Park Press and the Occupied Media pamphlet series. This is pamphlet number one, a series of talks and conversations with Noam Chomsky about the movement that opens and closes by remembering Howard Zinn. Although it's winter in New York, our intent is for these little publications to act as seeds of insurgent imagination, helping to sprout a beautiful American spring. Uh, there's a quote by Zinn, but I have to get to it next time. So, Occupy.
Occupy the world. Occupy your mind. Occupy. Freedom. Freedom, love. Freedom, love, justice.